uh, the first video that we have on our YouTube channel. It talks about how to choose the topic, but for today, I like to talk about how we can uh, write on it, right? So when you start writing on it, there are many, uh, there are certain style that, that the uh, you're expected to do, and then let's discuss, okay? <clears throat> sure, so this is going to be IA. This is going to be typical my students. Okay, okay, so let's concord the IA. All right, um, so today we're going to discuss how to write in a research tone versus the test. And then the second one is where to find good topics, okay? So here, um, is there anyone who has not done differentiation or integration? I would, uh, can I suppose that most of you guys are, are comfortable with the calculus? I'm not going to expect like uh, any like hardcore calculus, but just differentiation and integration, okay? Now let's talk about how to write in a research tone. So that's the first thing I like to talk about. And um, there are big difference between what, between the sort of a question type when you take a test, and then when you take when you write a research, right? So major difference, okay, major difference, is that when you write, you have enough time. You have enough time. So that means you are expected to give more details to your answers, right? For the test, it's about, it's to, to evaluate your witness, right? Under the time pressure, under given this circumstance, can you come up with a, you know, <clears throat> certain answer uh, without much justification, maybe without much proof, but be able to still give the, uh, you know, value for X or reason for X is, the, is a different sentiment, right? So to test relatively short period of time, Research relatively enough time, so the more details are expected. Okay, so you know, let me quickly talk about uh, with an example. Okay, let me quickly talk about with an example. So let's say that we are solving a uh, differential equation. If I am solving for the differential equation, okay, um, what we are expected to do. This is uh, one of the uh, primary example that you start with the differential equation is uh, is, is something with the law of cooling, right? So. Here, you know, what we usually did, okay, in integration is that uh, if I have a dy over dx is equal to x, and that is something that we start with the integration, right? So you can integrate with respect to x. So then you do, oh, okay, so this tells me that the y must, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, that I will integrate x dx, right? So then it's going to be 1 over 2 x squared plus c. Okay, that's great. Um, but now we have a second case, dy over dx is being y, that's, uh, that's a bit strange, right? Because what we usually try to do, describe our derivative is in terms of the, uh, the independent variable x, but now it's described in, in terms of the y, which I don't know my solution. But what you learn in service is learn something called a separational variable. You pair, you pair the y with the uh, the according variable. So for example, I'm going to pair the dy with y, right? So if you did, it's going to be one over y dy. So you're considering the derivative like fraction, you know, that's why you learn when you start working with the differential equation, which is, which is in the service, and you consider the derivative like a fraction. So then uh, if you rearrange dx to the left-hand side, I get dx. Then I can integrate left and right, right? So then on the left hand side, I get the logarithmic function, and then on uh, well, you know, let's use the constant c, and then the uh, for the constant, if you integrate with respect to x, you get the x, right? So that's how you would solve the questions during the test. You know, that's how you've been learning, and that's how you will be writing for your test. Okay, but when you decide to write this sort of a, a equation, let's say, for your IA, we cannot write like this. We cannot assume too many things. You have to justify. <clears throat> you have to explain why, for example, right, I can uh, rearrange the derivative like a fraction, right? So one of those details, the things that we've been taking for granted has to be well explained, right? So if I quickly show you the different style to be expected for the research paper, such as the internal assessment, right? When you attempt to discuss for the solution, you need to tackle more fundamental questions, such as 
Why can we move around the dy over the x? Is that ratio? Is that a fraction? If so, who said it, right? And then later on, can I understand and can I justify? So whenever there is a new technique that you decide to write for your IA, you cannot just say that I'm going to refer this technique discussed by Newton or etc. You do that and then you have to explain that you understood, right? So even the tiny bits like the you know differential equation, the separation of variable, something that you learn in school has to be explained thoroughly, okay? So that's the different sentiment sentiment I want to give you uh, between the test taking and the research writing. It is very different, okay? And also, you know, you have to give your personal engagement and personal reflection after all. <clears throat> sorry. After all, you are not expected. You are not expected to create something new. You are going to refer something that you already have done before, okay? Um, however, you know what we are what we need to do is to give our personal uh, uh reflection to discuss this question for example like let's have a look at this equation you know i need to solve it and we saw above that we can use separation of variable but that's not personal reflection that's something that textbook tells you to do right and and here when you're solving an equation like this you need to pretend that you knew nothing about it and that you are willing to give your personal thought for solving an equation okay so, you know, is there anyone who is, who is willing to volunteer to speak uh, so that we can have more intersection, interaction? Uh, is there anyone who is willing to uh, uh, have a discussion for this equation alone? Come on, guys, don't be shy. Chatting으로 말하셔도 돼요, chatting, right? So, you know, 만약에요, 이러한 differential equation 있어요, okay? So what function do you think is going to be suitable for, you know, plug it in here, you know? So what this equation is telling me is that I'm looking for a function. I'm looking for a function whose derivative becomes itself, right? Can anyone give me, a, 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 you know, a message on the Zoom chat? Uh, oh, okay, I think this function is like that and this, this function could be like this. Anyone? Right, so look, <clears throat> what, we, what we should said here is, uh, well, yeah, you know, this differential equation is telling me to look for, what is it? Uh, a function whose derivative becomes itself, right? Oh, that's interesting. Even though I don't know, uh, you know, a very advanced technique of integration, maybe. I maybe have learned already that uh, exponential, right? If you, exp if you differentiate the exponential function, you know that you get the exponential function. So that's great, right? So that's that's the personal step that you need to give, you see? before applying a technique to solve. I mean, because, you know, frankly speaking, if I have a question for IA, of course there should be a solution, right? You would, you would have carefully chosen the question so that you know that there, there is an answer. If you have chosen an equation or question that you don't know the answer, that's not a good example because you don't know how many steps or how many journey that it's going to take. You know, sometimes it can take very short or sometimes it can take very long. So when you decide to write a, a topic or equation, you must know that there is a somewhat solution that I can uh, understand and that I can write. And, and, you know, that's the whole point of, you know, coming up with this example. I knew what this solution is, but I'm not saying on my paper, oh, I know the solution, I can solve it, but I need to give my journey. Oh, I, I, you know, um, maybe I can think of it as just a differentiation, differentiation, differentiation skill, differentiation skill. I have learned polynomial, exponential logarithms and trigonometry, and maybe I will plug them in. Oh, you know, the most of them doesn't work. But now I realize, oh, okay, you know, uh, exponential works. So I'm very happy with that. But, you know, then the next step is, oh, well, you know, instead of playing this guess game, can I give a mathematical approach to find a actual solution? Is the step transition. That's the transition from your personal engagement, okay, to the use of mathematics. I cannot just throw out the sentence, oh, I'm going to solve it. We are not doing that. This internal assessment is a personal exploration, okay, that you are uh, exploring a topic supposedly that you, you, you didn't know. So you have to give this personal reflection part whenever you solve possible. Okay, so that's my first thing, right? So whenever we solve, we don't give away the, uh, the technique right away. Okay. And yeah, you know, 
let's have a look at the more interesting uh, equation. This is the more this is the equation that you will see in real life more often. And in fact, this is a very popular equation for physics. Okay, but you know, let's focus on mathematics now. Check this out. We were talking about right. We were talking about a first derivative becomes itself. So that was a solution given by an exponential equation, exponential function. Now I'm looking at the second derivative. Okay. Uh, is equal to the function itself, constant multiple function itself. And this is known as the second order differential equation. It's uh, one of the simplest kind. And, and uh, can you give guys a personal thought? And, you know, what do you think what I would have done if I was writing about this equation, right? <clears throat> what, I would, what I would have said in my paper is, oh, okay, you know what? Maybe I don't know a very advanced technique of solving a uh, differential equation. But I do know that I can give a try. I can give a try of uh, working with some function that I know that I'm willing to differentiate twice and, and find something uh, that becomes itself, right? So that's something that you can do, right? Within your knowledge. And we have to give that steps, even though that might fail. And it's definitely, it's completely okay, even if you fail, because then you're going to give the reflection saying, oh, okay, you know, the, the techniques that I know, are limited. So then I'm willing to apply something uh, uh, beyond the scope of the, the understanding of my own. And, and I'm willing to learn new technique if I can find from the resource is the attitude that we like to have whenever we, we whenever we introduce new technique. But, you know, um, let me ask you guys again, you know, you guys are more, like, more than uh, willing to type, all right? So can you guys give me an example, a function who, who I differentiate twice that it becomes itself? Is there any function who becomes itself after differentiating twice? Sure, let me wait for the uh, response. So I'm looking for a function that I differentiate twice that it becomes itself. Please give me an example. Very good. You know what? Yes, I think the exponential is a good example because if even if you differentiate twice, three times, four times, it becomes itself. And yes, thank you very much for the participation. Great answer. Sine x is also an example whose a second derivative becomes a constant multiple of itself because if you differentiate once, you get cosine x. If you differentiate once again, you get negative sine x. Okay, so you know what? These solutions are pos possible to be given by you because you already have learned. I don't know whether this guessing is the right way of technique, but at least it gave you a solution. Because in mathematics, my friend, mathematics, okay, what the math is very interested in, it uh, is two things. It, what mathematics is interested in two things, whether it has a solution, and then how many solutions do we have? So we're, we are interested in uniqueness. So when you start uh, working with the, uh, you know, third year level of education for mathematics, you know, these, these two are going to be the major questions. Does it exist? If it exists, how many does it exist? And if it's unique, we are very happy usually. Sure. Uh, but here's the thing, you know, here's the thing. What about, I don't know, what about the, uh, you know, e to the power of x, plus e to the power of negative x, right? So if I differentiate twice again, you know, it can be also described as a constant multiple of itself. But, you know, what I'm saying here is I found the solutions, but it seems like there can be more, right? Especially some or difference or a difference of the solutions that I guessed, right? So now as we increase the order of the derivative, such as a second order differential equation, it seems like the gen it generates way more solutions than we know of, right? And that's the reflection you're supposedly giving by yourself. Of course, those discussions, those you know, those questions obviously will be well described in a textbook or reference or an article, but you need to pretend, you need to act like this is the, engage, this is the uh, personal ref reflection that you have come up. And, and this type of, this level of personal reflection should be able to be given by the, uh, the, the higher level students, okay? So yeah, you know, that's what we are discussing about, right? So you need to then give these things that you can already do on your own. And then you move on to, you see, and then you move on to the uh, advanced techniques, okay? 
So always on the research paper, we don't just solve. Solving a problem is something with the test. It's not the test. It is a research paper. You have to explain quite a bit of things that you are writing about, okay? And, you know, so let me give you another equation. And, and um, you know, we, we like to, you know, maybe leave it as an exercise, okay? But, you know, think about this. This is much harder. This is much harder differential equation, right? It's got the com linear combination of a second derivative and, oh, sorry, I'm supposed to write the y prime and y here, okay? So let's say that I got a differential equation of a second derivative, okay? And then first, der first derivative, okay? And then the solution like that. So imagine on your real life example, imagine on your real life example, all right, I don't know if it's a law of cooling or a wave equation or heat wave. Uh, there can be so many, logistic growth, whatever. Uh, the real life situation can be well described by differential equation. And, and unfortunately, let's say that we got the second order differential equation to describe the situation. So I got the equation, I have to solve it, okay? So here's the thing, you know, I gave you two examples. I gave you two, example of, two examples of uh, dy over dx being y, and then we, we just, you know, discussed, oh, yeah, y equal to e to the power of x cubed seems to be a good solution. And there also the second derivative, uh, second order differential equation, we said, that, oh, yeah, you know what, the exponential or the sine x seems to be a very nice choice is what we, what we, what we talked about, okay? Okay, that's great. You know, we said that we are willing to give our personal uh, uh, you know, knowledge to solve a problem. And here's my question, guys. Here's my question. I'd be very happy if you are able to start questioning about the solution of such equation. If I wanted to solve this second order differential equation, obviously there are many ways, you know, there are Laplace transformation, auxiliary equation, and, you know, the infinite series method. So many, there, there, there are so many, but we are not, you know, trying to open up the question like that. That would have been the second part of exploration where you introduce new technique, maybe something that you have not learned. But you know, what would be the my first engagement with this question within the things that I already have learned? What do you think I should talk about first? I should talk about if I know a function that I can plug it in that might work well. You know, I'm not looking for a solution. I'm just thinking, I'm just trying to think of any function who can work well in this situation. And here's my question, guys. Here's my question, guys. I've learned many, many functions and namely there are two functions. There are polynomials and there are, there are functions that are not polynomial. We call that as a transcendental function. Okay, so those are the, uh, you know, the sine, cosine, exponential, log, etc. And then here's my question, guys. Here's my question. If I let y to be x to the power of n, would that be a good equation to plug it in for my second order differential equation? I just want to hear, yes, it is good. No, I don't think it's good. Is what I just want to see on the Zoom chat. Let's give it a try. All right, on the chat, I want uh, someone to please, uh, I mean, I want everyone to try, right, to think whether, you know, assuming the y equal to polynomial can be a good approach to solve, to derive something meaningful out of this differential equation. Sure, I got one response. Thank you for participating. Sure, thank you for participating. All right. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. I don't think this is going to be a good, sure, very good, guys. Thank you for trying, okay? This is always nice, all right? So look, what I wanted to check is not to choose a which one is a suitable function, just to try out with the polynomial. I mean, think about it, think about it, man, think about it. I differentiate twice, okay? I differentiate twice. I get n times n minus one, all right? X to the power of n minus two, minus uh, three times n times x to the power of n minus one plus four times uh, x to the power of n is equal to zero. And, you know, you know, suddenly it became a polynomial equation, which is not, let me repeat, which is not easy to solve, okay? Not easy to solve, unless, 
unless uh, degree two polynomial, okay? As soon as it exceeds degree two, such as a cubic, quartic, degree four, five polynomial, they are not easy to solve, okay? So I don't think the polynomial is a good idea to meddle around with the, uh, what is it, the, uh, the second order differentiation like that, right? It's gonna give you a degree of a polynomial that I don't know. And usually for the polynomial, we only prefer linear or quadratic. Okay, that's great. And let's try to try with my, maybe with sine x, you know, sine the sinusoidal wave, you know, it's a very prevalent in real life. Okay, so maybe he's, he can be fitted in. He can be fitted in. But but then again, you see, but then again, if I differentiate twice, once, and uh, you know, just leave it as it is, I get negative sine x, you know, minus three cosine x and plus four sine x. And maybe that's not easy to solve, right? Maybe that's not easy to solve. Because, you know, whenever we have a bunch of sine and cosine that's got like the different uh, period or different amplitude, it's usually not that not that easy to solve. Okay, but, but for this one, actually, it's quite easy. But, you know, it, it depends what period we had, right? And then what amplitude we had. And then because of that, I think it's also difficult to solve. Okay. However, you know, this is what, this is what is important. You know what? Imagine that I was uh, solving this differential equation for my IA. Okay. And then what, you know, what I would have done, what I would have done is, okay, you know what? This looks very difficult for me. Maybe I would tone it down. I would deal with the equations that I already have learned or that I'm capable of seeing a solution. And obviously, you know, for example, when you're trying to solve a quadratic equation, you don't jump into the quadratic equation right away. You think about the constant solution. You think about the linear solution. So linear equation, etc. And then this is what I would try, I would have done. You know, I would have explained about this differential equation to get used to what, what it means by the differential equation. But, you know, when you look at them, when you look at this situation, you know, what was the popular solution? What was the popular solution for each differential equation that we have seen before? That would that looked simpler than what we need to solve, and but looking somewhat similar. You know, what who was a good example to start with? Sure, I want everyone to try to please uh you know try on the chat. Which function do you think was, uh, oh yeah, you know what? That function appears quite often. So it might as well just appear on my real equation that I need to solve, you know? Which function do you think is a, has been very popular as a solution? Don't be shy. It was not polynomial. We didn't see any polynomial here. Which function appeared quite often here, guys? Thank you very much. You're absolutely right. The exponential appeared very, very often. So then you can take a leap of faith. Oh, you know what? Maybe, you know, maybe exponential function might work as well here. Rago, you know, okay, transition. You cannot, look, you cannot just jump into solving this differential equation. You cannot do that simply because that would be solving a test question. We are not writing about a test question. We are writing about a research paper that needs to show the journey. So when I have very complicated equation, you need to play around with the simpler version and to see any, any uh, you know, any uh, uh, hint lying under the equation. And yes, that's a great observation. Why being, you know, let me give a constant multiple. Lambda x is a good equation to play around because you know what? The nature of exponential is that if you keep differentiating the exponential, you may get the constant multiple as a chain as a result of the chain rule still does not change the nature of a function because for the polynomial, if you differentiate, it changes the degree. So it, you know, method of solving that equation changes completely. Logarithmic function, if you differentiate, you change into rational and, you know, get, gets reduced all the time, every time we differentiate. Sine, cosine, tangent, if you keep differentiating, you change the functions, right? And that's not so pretty to work with this differential equation. But if you do with the exponential, okay, you still preserve the nature of the exponential function. It still becomes an exponential. So, you know, let me quickly differentiate this twice. Okay, let me differentiate this twice. I get lambda squared e to the power of lambda x minus three lambda e to the power of lambda x plus four e to the power of lambda, e to, uh, four times e to the power of lambda x. You know, I just differentiate twice once and just substitute in all 
here into the equation that was the same, okay? But here's the thing, you know, now, you know, even after the differentiation, everything is preserved. And now I see a common factor. I can actually get rid of it, right? I'm very happy because, you know, now the, this very clean function whose derivative became itself gives me a, another equation that becomes a quadratic. But that's, that's fascinating because I didn't have anything like that. I had a very complex differential equation, but by choosing a suitable function on my own with the observation made me realize, oh, okay, you know what? In fact, you know, this may be led to, maybe have led into something meaningful, but I don't know what it means, you know? This is just an equation. That's the mathematical part. I don't know what it means. But inductive science, such as, you know, physics, biology, chemistry, we'll be studying what it means in real life, right? And, and that's how you need to tackle the problems. Every time you present something new that you haven't learned in the service, you cannot just throw it away. You always have to give a personal sort of journey that you have derived up to a certain point. But you know what? At, if I look at this quadratic equation, I would not know what it means. But I, it just cool. it's just cool. It is just deductively beautiful in a mathematical sense that I can actually tone down this fancy differential equation into something quadratic. You need to appreciate that in your paper. And then you say, okay, you know what? Maybe my knowledge is very limited. So it's it's not, it's not, I'm not, I'm not able to cover this within my knowledge. So you know, I will then have a look at any resource that might have something with the differential equation with the second order. And then the quadratic equation that I have just that I've just come up is what you need to write to justify ju to justify for your research. Because think about it. If you just say, oh, I, I was reading a textbook and it gave me this equation and it was interesting, I want to solve it. You already lose the half the percent of your personal engagement because that's not authentic. But when you were solving the problem, seemingly, pretendingly, pretensively, uh, pretentiously that, you know, oh, I didn't get any hint or clue from, from textbook, but I just was working on this particular situation with this equation, and I was I realized that I was limited with certain skills. Then I look, then I try to refer research uh, a new technique is the right way of showing your personal journey. Hence, the level of a personal engagement will be boosted up. So that's how you need to present. So because for the IA, you will be describing a lot of things that you haven't learned before, but do not just throw it away. Always give reason why you came up with that. Of course, you can say that I came up with that with the textbook, but not at the first. Later on, after you have shown enough personal engagement. Okay. Sure. But you know what? Yes. You know, there's another way of showing the new technique. You know, the, the first half of this, uh, the, you know, use of math, use of mathematics, I, I, I refer to something with the differential equation. The reason I put the differential equation is because it's just a very, very popular technique. Uh, as it contains a lot of a uh, real life situation, you know the math IA doesn't necessarily have to be related with the I, uh, the real life situation, but often, often school would demand that you need to have a real life application. For that sense, the differential equation is a very nice. Another, uh, you know, another uh, technique of uh, uh, that that is a very popular to this to associate with the real life situation is something called the. Uh, Euler Lagrange equation, or something called uh, the, the the variation principle, and it, it's a study of uh, something with the optimization in real life, right? For example, you know, if I have a spear, you know, if I have a spear, and then you know, imagine this is Earth, you know, let's say the let's assume the Earth is a spherical, and then suppose that I'm I'm an intern here, and then there's a you know, let's say I don't know CDG, right? There's a body, and then. I want to fly there, right? And then, if you want to fly from Incheon to 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 Bari, and uh, what we often think is that we obviously want to go to the shortest path, right? And and then what we learn in the two D diagram is the two D place that is that the shortest distance will be usually given by the short uh, the linear line, right? But on the sphere in a very greater scale, it's not linear, right? It's nonlinear, right? Obviously, if you know if it goes straight line, it's gonna I'll go with the tangential path that it's gonna off course, um, but you know it's it's nonlinear, right? And then we want to find the shortest path between two coordinates on the sphere, and it's usually given by a great circle. 
and it's usually given by an arc length of, of the largest possible radius of a circle. But obviously, we are able to you know justify that with the use of mathematics, right? Um, and for example, you know another example that is a popular you know this was written in two thousand seventeen is that look at this you know um, what the student wrote was that you know there was a, a you know Korean and he went to a field trip in Korea when he was young. And he saw he saw this uh, you know the traditional house with a certain shape of the roof you see, but if you look at this shape, and what the uh, tourist what the tourist uh, tourist tour guide said uh, is that this is actually the uh, you know uh, the great spirit of ancestor because they made they chose that non-linear shape so that they can protect the roof from uh, rainfall and then and then the student said oh why right and then. And the guy said, uh, yeah, you know, when it starts raining, this, um, you know, sh this nonlinear curve would guarantee that the raindrops descend the quickest, right? And, and that's how you show the level of a person engagement, right? Because the use of mathematics and uh, all the things that you were write about, it's already there, right? It's already been written. It's all conventional. You're not inventing any new mathematics. Instead, you're they are checking how you will be able to apply for the situation that you encounter in real life. And then this example, this way of showing his personal engagement is so authentic that it already earned at least, I think, 50 marks, you know, because it's very, very authentic. You know, that's great. So what you should really focus is how to make your personal engagement, personal example, very authentic in a way that, that you already give a good impression. But, you know, then if you start writing about, it's actually something called a cycloid, right? So the cycloid gives you the quickest descent, right? It's not linear path. It gives you, it's the cycloid is the, the, the quickest descent. And to be able to solve, all right, that optimization, op optimization question is actually very, very difficult. Well, to solve is not difficult. But to explain is very difficult because it's got something called the variation principle. And there's something that you learn in when you're in, you know, second or third or fourth grade in college. It depends on what course you take. So it's actually very, very difficult to explain. And and as I've said before, you know, whenever you want to, you know, whenever you want to write uh, uh, about new technique. You know, I just said that you need to give your personal engagement. You need to give more empirical explanation from your experience. However, there are certain there are certain types of mathematics that is just too difficult to explain, unless it involves a lot of a very technical terms, right? And then you are not expected to give too much of the the extended version of the math, because uh, they would then go they can go you know into the, the freshman, junior, senior level of mathematics, and that's just not what the IA would like to see. Right, it needs to be leveled out. However, think. However, thing is this. So he carry on writing about this very fancy equation. Okay, he carry on uh, on on the uh, solving that equation. But uh, you know, this is the paragraph that he wrote. Right, he said, "Oh yeah, throughout the further research, I learned the blah blah equation, and then this is useful for finding the maximum minimum of a functional. You know, you, you know, you don't learn something called the functional in high school." And then he just he just carry on solving it then, right? But if you look at it, he didn't prove anything. He didn't actually explain how he would have come up with that equation. But here's the thing, you know, let's see the comment that he got from his teacher. Let's have a look at the comment, all right? Let's have a look at the comment. This is the typical assessment uh, given by the teacher, right? So you, you, you're you usually given the general comments from the teacher, and then they usually put the comment for their internal assessment evaluation, Okay. So now it's, let's see what the teacher was writing about his comment on this IA that was quite difficult, right? Because it, it involved something with the Euler-Lagrange equation. But let's see how he, how he added, actually managed to get away, managed to get away from writing extensive proof on this paper. Let's have a look. So, you know, in the general comment, right? In the general comment, what the teacher said is the following. He says, look at this. The proof of this theorem, though not required in the service, uh, was a set as a homer, you see. This is really, really important. So look, in his research of this, he also encountered blah, blah, blah. He then asked to do a pure mathematics exploration. So he absolutely did understand everything he wrote. If only all students were like him. 
And that's the another way of, let's say, increasing your personal engagement, okay? So what I'm saying is, is this, look at this. Look, as I've told you before, the equation that he wrote was a very complicated, all right? Hence, at first, he wrote. He wrote everything he could, and it was very extensive. It was like 20 or 30 pages. It was very long. And then he went up to the teacher, convincing the teacher that he knows what he's talking about when he was writing this equation in his IA. But he, of course, showed concern that his IA may, might get then too much. Maybe it, it maybe gets more worthy while to write that as an extended essay. And then teacher then gave him the positive feedback. You know what? I'm aware that you know this technique and that you are able to prove or explain how that equation can be derived. And that's all I need to hear. Then I let you just write down the perk of the equation, just applying it to the situation rather than explaining all the, all the bits and pieces. And it's another alternative way of increasing the personal engagement, you see. The first example that we saw with the differential equation was that we had to give all the explanations. Right? Oh, yeah, I think the exponential function can work. Sinusoidal function can work, et cetera, et cetera. But then this second example with the Euler-Lagrange equation, which is also very popular to write about the EIA because it talks about the maximum minimum of real, of real life situation, would require way more uh, mathematical contents, which is usually not expected from a high school student. However, because it's a research paper, you have enough time. And what the student did is that he gave enough his time to go through this and then write about and then convinced the teacher to... Uh, to, to give him good grades without actually putting a lot of proof because it was a sad as a homer. And that is the sort of a comment you really, really want to get. This is a very important because I don't want you to confuse yourself. Internal assessment, right, internally assessed, obviously it's very important to, to get a good grade on the teacher, is like TOK because when you write the theory of knowledge, when you write TOK, okay, you just don't write the document. You have to give oral presentation. Okay, and it's the same thing for the IA because you have to choose your topic first. And then you let's say supposedly you prepare three topics, all right? You prepare three topics and then you, you present it to the teacher to, to ask whether this topic is you know suitable or not. And when you give that presentation, that's your first impression. And if you don't give a good first impression, you know, however good you write later on it's just not going to lead into something you know nice comment like this because then the teacher will say oh at first you didn't know much of what you were trying to write uh, but now in the written format it's very good so i'm, I'm doubtful of, of the authenticity of the, this document right because it's very easy to tell how what type of math that you wrote in the math in, 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 in the in the contents and check if you understand because if you're not as soon as you feel unable to explain what you wrote it's just it, it's just a disaster right so make sure you always interact with the teachers. And if you think what you have written is too demanding, okay, then you can sort of maybe get this type of comment and get away from writing the proof. But let me, let me, uh, let me assure you, this is very rare to happen because this requires a good bonding with the between the teacher and student. And they may not be built within uh, one or two years. Maybe it will require more time. And this student was lucky, but sometimes... You don't have to write too much proof. If you can get away, comment like this is another example that I wanted to show you. Okay, so it's like a TOK. You must give a good impression so that you can uh, get away from the proof because if you were not able to, you have to write things like that. You know, this is one of the, this is like a step one out of five, right? This is step two out of five to explain about the Euler Lagrange equation. And something that, like this, you don't learn it in school, you see? So we are really not expected to write proof like this. We must get away by getting the comments like, oh, wow, this student absolutely knew everything as it was a homework. And then if it were students like them, then you don't have to run because even if it's not present in the paper, it's given in the comment and either by school or later on by the IBO, they're going to accept, oh, well, you know what? Yeah, he knows what he's talking about. It's great is uh, what you should prepare whenever you write uh, uh, advanced technique for your internal assessment that is usually outside of the syllabus. Okay, you know what? Then let's move to the second uh, uh, topic, second discussion. But before we move on, is there any comment 
have uh, is any question about the first topic when we were when we just briefly went over what how to write for the IA? Is there any question from the uh, first half? If there's no question, please type there's no question. So that I can move on. But if you have question, yes, feel free to ask. I'll be very uh, happy to uh, explain. Thank you, guys. All right. So let's now move into the second part. If you have not chosen any topic yet, or if you already have the topic and still doubtful about your topic, here is some of the good suggestions that I can give you. Okay. So there are many good examples from the IB textbook or IB exams. You see, I think I think these are the best source. I, I don't think you need to go beyond these because they're, it's already good enough. It's already good enough, really, frankly speaking. It's more than enough. All right. So if you haven't chosen the topic yet, just go through the questions or, you know, in each book, in every book, you know, at the end of chapter, end of chapter, they say, oh, you know, to more to think more or investigation, you know, like things like activity, you know. So those things will usually require a topic that goes beyond the scope of the syllabus that will require like most of the times the first year level of mathematics in college. I think those are the topics you should really write about, right? So let me give you, let me show you some example on a textbook, uh, you know, that is, uh, I think, good IEA topic, right? So, you know, this is a question from the Pearson textbook. Look at this, you know, this is the differential equation that we talked about. Uh, but the reason I brought this is not to ask you to write this as a topic, but this is a beautiful example, the way you should be writing. So here's what I'm saying. Of course, of course, you shouldn't write a first order differential equation if it's a homogeneous. Uh, that would be too easy. Okay, so do not go uh, with the level of a first order differential equation if you're a HS student. But he here's the thing. Whenever you present something, as I've told you before, you need to explain, Okay. And many textbooks for the differential equation that involves real life, real life examples, such as the law of cooling, explains how they have uh, brought the equation. So for the IA paper, it's not a test. So you do not just present the equation, make sure how you can derive it. So I'm not asking you to this, ask you to derive the method of solution that we already discussed above, but even the question, even the problem like this, you have to explain how you have came up like came up with this like this. You see. So what I'm saying here is, why differential equation is so good for describing a real life real life example is the following. You know, imagine you have a cup of coffee on the table. You see. Very hot. And I don't know. I, I simply just don't know what function is going to explain for its temperature change. I just don't know. I don't have it, right? Maybe I collect the data and it's obviously changing, but I don't know what function it's going to be because it can be a rational function. It can be exponential function. It can be a logarithmic function. It can be certain polynomial as a piecewise function. I simply just don't know, you see? So I don't have a solution. That's the start of the spirit of the differential equation. So if I had to explain about this question of differential equation, I would say, oh, okay, you know what? But I, at least I know how it's changing, you see? And every time you're talking about how fast it's changing, it's not about just the function. If it's about how fast it's changing, it's about the rate of change, hence the derivative. So then I, I might say, okay, I know how to deal with the derivative, okay? And this rate of change, maybe it's very fast. It's, it's huge. The rate of change, I think, would be huge if the temperature of the object and then the environment was huge. And, I mean, think about ice cube. Think about ice cube on a desert, okay, on a desert. Obviously, it's going to change very fast because the difference is huge. Whereas if ice cube was put at North Pole, the change is going to be very similar because the difference is very, very similar. And then that, what I can present, what I can claim is that, oh, you know what? Therefore, I think the rate of change, how fast the temperature is changing may be proportional to the difference of the temperature in the environment is how you can come up with an equation like that. You need to become Newton itself when you present a question. You cannot just say, I got this equation from textbook. That's just not good, okay? So even bring up the question, you need to explain. And then you also need to explain the technique of solving it also. You cannot say, oh, 
you know what, how to solve it. There's interesting technique like this presented in this textbook, so I'll use it. It's just not good way of writing the IA paper. You always have to justify why you're taking those steps. Okay. Sure, so differential equation is a very good to describe the change changes in real life. So that's why I suggest, you know, because, uh, you know, for the internal assessment, for the internal assessment, you don't necessarily have to uh, write a real life example, but it just school loves it. Okay, the teachers love dealing with the differential equation because it's more fun to write, to, more fun to read, and just more applicable, they think. But remember, mathematics is a science of a deduction, it does not have to have a practical application for discussion, right? It can follow, but it's not the main aim of it. It's, it's all about the aesthetic of deduction, okay? Anyways, yeah, so if you are looking for a very nice uh, uh, example in differential equation, you can definitely refer to textbook. It, you know, it's in the service and it's got many good example, right? Such as this, you know, let's have a look at the May 2021 exam, exam question, right? Uh, this is the, you know, typical logistic growth, right? And, you know, check this out, check this out. If you look at this, right, on the test, are they interested in how you have come up with this equation? If you look at the equation, if you look at the question, does it, is it interested in how you come up with the differential equation? Please type yes or no. Exactly. They're not interested in how you came up with this equation. They just give you the equation. They expect you to solve it under the time pressure. That's the test format. All right. But for us, if you wanted to write about the differential equation on the logistic growth, you have to explain how you would have come up with that. Okay. You have to, yes. What is it? You know, you have to show how you would come up with it. That's more important because that's the you know, person engagement, right? And then, you know, the typical speaking is, you know, what I would do is um, I would present uh, like graph of America, right? So if I have a graph of America, right? Like this. Um, if I was writing the logistic growth in my, you know, IA for which you shouldn't because it's too easy and it's it's something that you discuss on the textbook. So do not write the, you know, population change on the uh, IA. But, you know, if I just, you know, mention it, because it's nice differential equation. Look at this. You know, how if I had to explain how I came up with this, you know, logistic growth is the following. You know, I would say, oh, you know what? To get a idea, I would look at real life example like that. You know, I look at a real life example like this, and then I say, oh, hold on a sec. You know, uh, at uh, up to up until a certain point, I don't know what time this is going to be. I don't know the time, but at certain population, right? It was changing very fast. But after that point, now it's got, what is it? Change of concavity was going up. Everything is going up. Up until here, sorry. And up until here, my bad. Up until there, it's always going up. And now, but at a certain time, it changes the concavity, it changes from concave up to concave down, okay? And that always is implying the inflection point. So I want you to remember, Inflection, okay, of the function is the maximum or the minimum of the derivative, okay? So at that inflection point, when it was changing from concave up to down, that means you have a local maximum of the derivative. Okay, so I don't know. I don't know my population function. I don't know it. But, you know, in order to describe his behavior, maybe I will look at the rate of change because I can describe, I can talk about how fast it's changing. At first, it was changing very, very slow. It was changing very slow. That means the, the gradient of the population was relatively very, very small. So at first, when we had a small population, I think the rate was very slow so slow that it was not changing. So that's what I will assume. The more population you have, the faster it got, okay? But at a certain population, let's say PE, okay? At a certain population, I have now inflection point, which means I got the maximum. 
uh, what is it? The rate of change. That's the derivative. That's the definition of inflection point of the original function. That would be the uh, the maximum minimum of the derivative. In this case, it was changing from concave up to down. That's the uh, the local maximum of the derivative. So I got that it was changing the fastest, but now it is changing slowly. It is still increasing. So my derivative is still positive, but now it's slowing down. So now it's it shows a decreasing gradient. Okay. So I, got, I, I was analyzing the change of the derivative, right? You see, it is how you work. But I want you to check this out. Look at this. What function does this remind you guys? Now I want that answer from the chat. What function does this remind you? Yes, that's great. That's what we need to observe. And that, my fellow students, is what you need to write. I cannot just vomit this equation. I can't simply do that. That's just a test. But if I'm writing about the internal assessment, you need to give this type of a personal reflection. Oh, you know what? I like to see just the behavior of a change with my real data. I'm sure you can find massive data about American population, right? America. And then you just play around with the rate, you see? You know what? It may not be quadratic. Of course, you know what? It can be positively skewed. It can be negatively skewed. I don't know. I'm just looking at the most optimal, most idealistic situation, which obviously is not going to happen, okay? Because, you know, it's a, it's a real life. It's got a lot of a social, I mean, external factors such as war and et cetera, or unification. Um, yeah, but, you know, I'm talking about the very, very ideal situation. And yes, and it looks like a quadratic. And you know what? So, it's, so okay, I'm going to say, okay. So I like to actually build up an equation of a differential equation where I say the, uh, the, 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 the derivative is going to be uh, concave down quadratic. You know, I'll say, okay, negative A times P, P minus, you know, let's say that maximum population like that. You know, then, I, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's right. Maybe it's wrong. I don't know. But, uh, you know, it's worthwhile to try because it's my work. It's my personal engagement to come up with that. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Obviously, you know it is the answer. We learned. We, we can know. We would know if we were referring to a textbook that this differential equation would be given as such. We already learned that. Or we can already learn that from the textbook. But in the writing, you need to pretend that you didn't know and that you are coming up with a solution from your personal engagement. But that just happens to be correct right? We cannot give some random reflection and claim that would be correct because that's going to lead into something way more difficult or no solution. As I've told you before, before writing the IA, you need to know what you're going to be writing about 100%. And then you pretend to not know, but write these essay as if it's a personal journey. It's like every, every story, every, every novel, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, they knew the conclusion already, all right? But when they are writing about it, they need to make it more interesting. And that's what you're doing, okay? We already know this population graph, the, the ideal one. It's going to be given as such, you see? But I, I'm pretending that I didn't know. I'm looking at my real data. I'm saying, oh, yeah, you know what? It was changing very fast at that inflection point. So maybe it's a good, maybe it's an important point. Anything with the maximum minimum is important. Is how you write. You need to give your personal reflection, personal engagement to derive it. And that's that's to be tested. Okay, good. And yes, you know, I cannot emphasize the importance of the textbook. It's got many, many great examples, many, many great examples. This number seven is also very, very, I think it's very beautiful. Because yes, I got a, I got a concave quadratic, right? If I was only solving that differential equation, that would have been a very typical logistic growth. But I want you to have a look at this, guys. I want you to have a look at this. They multiply this random factor which is one minus alpha times the square root of T. And I want to ask you guys, I want to ask you guys, I want to ask you guys, you know, let me graph this function. Let me graph this function. You know, the, the you know, the square root of T. Okay. It looks like that. Okay. And then uh, if I multiply by negative, it's a reflection along the x-axis. It looks like this. So, you know, that graph is probably looking like this. Okay. It's probably looking like that. Okay. What I'm suggesting here is after a certain time, after a certain time, all right, after a certain time, the factor was a positive to change to negative, okay? So check this out, guys, check this out. If I had multiplied this and after a long period of time,
what do you think the behavior of my derivative here is? Do you think it's going to be positive or negative after a long period of time because of this factor? Because of this factor, what do you think? And yes, I want to hear the response from the chat. Very good. It is what you need to observe. That's a great, great observation. Okay. Because the typical logistic growth that we learn from the differential equation, okay, is a, is a beautiful idealistic sigmoid shape. It's got something called a maximum capacity. It's got the carrying capacity. It does not go down. But if you look at the situation in China, Japan, Korea, Singapore, they all tend to have have a similar behavior of decreasing trend. You know, if I solve this the differential equation, you got a solution like that. And if you look at it, it's kind of like that. It's, it's got, what is it? Yes, it was going up for some certain period of time, but now it is going down. Obviously, you know, you don't want, you don't want Korea, Japan, or China to have this type of, uh, you know, modeling because it, it means it literally causes extinction, right? So obviously, you know, the population trend, uh, differential equation for that uh, situation it wouldn't be given as such but i'm just showing you i'm just showing you if i suddenly came up with this factor that can give me the negative gradient after a certain period of certain period of time all right could give me different solution where now it suggests the what is it the extinction extinction graph that's why however however yes I'm very happy that you are, we are aware of this. This is a question. This is a question. This is a test paper, okay? So yes, being able to solve that is more important. But guys, please tell me, if I was to write this extinction graph for my paper, what do you think the most important thing would have been, right? What would have been the most personally engaging materials to write about? I want that from the message. how we can solve that equation or, or, or what do you think the most emphasis we would have put in terms of the personal engagement? Yes, you know, give some thought. It's very important to, to think first, you know, before we give like a answer. Yes. What do you think would have been the most important if I were to write this example for my internal assessment? Uh, if you don't know, just type you don't know. But if you want to try to think and tell me your idea, I'd be very happy to hear because it's all about discussion, isn't it? Thank you very much. My fundamental question is this, guys. My fundamental question is this. Where? Why? Why this? You see? I get it that I had to multiply that to talk about the extinction so that it's going to have a negative gradient, but I graphed the function for you already. You know, it looked like that, you see? Right? And it had uh, things like that. But so, okay, so then my question is, why not the other function? Right, such as, I don't know, exponential decay with the negative horizontal asymptote. Right? Why not this? You know, why not this? Or other functions, I don't know, there's so many, like the, uh, what, what about, uh, you know, one minus cubic root of x? You know, why not? Right? Why square root of t? Sorry, t. Are the things that you can talk about? Why did I have to multiply that? So, 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 so dis describing the equation and coming up with the personal engagement, the authentic ex explanation of describing the equation is way more important because that's the only part where you can show your personal engagement. Solving this equation is not personal engagement. It's already there. The technique of solution is already there. It's, this one is going to be done by a separation of variable, for example. That's not authentic. But being able to describe what's happening within the equation is what's going to be tested on the IA because that's the spirit of the research paper, not the test taking. Okay. Right, right. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. So I'm just saying, you know, look at this. Yes, in Holder, as a question, there are many, 
you know, I'm just speaking on t- in terms of the the population uh, population growth, the logistic growth, because I just wanted to show you even one example. One typical differential equation example is many books describe in a different tone. You know, the Pearson was talking about love calling. The his book was talking about you know extinction graph, and now the Holder talks about something called the Gompers equation. This is also a very nice modeling for the population change. And as you can see now, I'm multiplying with exponential decay, you see. So it's a very interesting. It's uh, a, a many of the subjects got, many of the textbooks got different approach for differential equation for logistic growth. And God knows how many different, uh, you know, topics can be discussed for different examples, you see. So it is, I think it's, it's, it's more than enough to go through the textbook and see which equation you should get, right? So look at this Oxford book now got the, another population, Gompertz equation, you see, but now it's given in logarithms. You see, now we have three different types of differential equation from the three different textbooks. The Oxford now contains something with the logarithms, right? Look, the Holder now, it's got something with the exponential. And now what the He's had something with the, this, uh, you know, negative factor. And, I, and that's why I'm suggesting, yes, if you want to find a real nice, you know, nice example to write about, I think going through the textbook is the best way. Sure, but you know, something to you know before we finish. You know, I want to talk about the emphasis. Yes, you know, the reason I'm talking about the differential equation in this time is because I wanted to tell, I wanted to show you right that the um, most often the the school wants to write about what is it the um, real life situation. You see, um, but you don't have to right. The mathematics is supposed to be the app. It has the beauty in the abstract. Okay, and it doesn't necessarily have to be applicable in real life, right? So if you can convince your teacher that, oh yeah, you know what, I want to write something about theoretical, right? For example, why does you know the sequence, the series converts to this, you know, and it's got many different proofs, and maybe it doesn't have too much real life practical reason of just solving that equation. It's actually fine, but sometimes uh, some schools will be captivated with the uh, idea that it has to be applied in the uh, what is it? The real life situation, it doesn't have to be. So if you can convince your teacher that you don't have to write in a real life situation, then you don't have to write about the real life situation. You don't necessarily have to write a differential equation. You can some, write something with the number theory, you know, the statistic, things like that. It's fine, right? It's not physics. It's not IA. So it can be practical, no problem. And yeah, you know, I also wanted to show you that, you know, in the actual exam, you know, here you had to solve you know, sign, you know, I think it was a two pi over five, right? Uh, you, you know, sometimes, you, you know, for, so there's an exam question and there's a reason that this exam question was given because, you know, there's a very famous historical observation with those type of questions. And and what, what often students do is to extend that idea for their internal assessment, right? So this, the science, science history, the science 70 degree, the 72 degree, which was the evaluation of uh, working with the science five theta was applied for someone else's the IA with finding the science degree one, right? He used that technique, extended it for finding the science degree one, right? I think that's a very, very nice approach. So what I'm suggesting here is that also in exam questions, there are many, many beautiful topics to talk about. And, you know, for example, in 2004 here for the trigonometric induction, some, some random polynomial was given without the name, but it's called Chebyshev polynomial. And then uh, this polynomial has got a very uh, interesting feature as well, uh, working with the trigonometry and polynomial. And it's just very beautiful to write uh, exam paper questions to write an inter internal assessment because that's the spirit of the IB. So obviously there is no way they're not going to like it because they gave this question for the internal assessment. So if you can extend to the internal assessment, it's just guarantee that it's going to be great, you see. And then there's another question. Uh, that was asked in paper three, 2023, like the one and a, uh, one and a half month ago, right? And then in this question, they had to right, uh, discuss the behavior of this x to the power of n times it's to the power of negative x, okay? And, uh, you know, and then you had to graph it and see the behavior of it, right? And I think it, this definitely can be uh, you know, extended for the IA. You know, what I'm suggesting here is if you if you found some like a killer killer questions in school in school test or paper three or exam, 
if you found that question very interesting, it's so good to write an internal assessment about it because it can always extend it to something college level. You know, this is something called the gamma function. And you can definitely write about it it's within the, I think, the scope of the understanding that you have in school. But I'm just merely suggesting that there are beautiful questions in the questions that you can extend. So you don't necessarily have to elaborate from even textbook. I think starting with the question for the theoretical purpose of the IA is good enough, right? And yeah, you know. So, you know, like before, you know, before we finish, you know, let me quickly show you a graph of that. You know, let me just, yeah, you know, I think it would be nice to show you the graph, you know, for example, you know, it was x to the power of n times e to the power of negative x squared, right? So, you know, if you think about it, I got x to the power of n, e to the power of negative x, okay? That's what we have. Uh, but, you know, this is the polynomial, you know, it's got, it can be x squared, x cubic, x4, but it, this is exponential decay, you see? So it's changing very fast up and it is changing very fast down. But eventually, who do you think is going to be stronger effect? Do you think the exponential decay is going to influence stronger or the power function such as x to the power of n guys? Who do you think it's going to be, you know, affecting greater? Uh-huh. Moshi Moshi, who do you think is going to have a greater power? The po polynomial? Yes, ex exponential, exponential will be way more powerful. So whatever the behavior that I have with the polynomial, it's just it's going to come down because exponential decay is going to just kill it to zero, right? It's a very, very powerful function. So if I look at, for example, if I look at the x squared times e to the power of negative x, you see, let's have a look at this behavior for x bigger than... Um, you know, give me one second. Let me change it as a function. Okay. And then, uh, yeah. So, you know, let's say, uh, sure, x squared uh, e to the power of uh, negative x, and let's say uh, x is bigger than zero. So, yeah, let's have a look at it. So, it was changing a bit. However, as you can see, exponential decay just kills it. Do you guys see the graph? If you see the graph, please say yes. If you don't, please say no. Thank you very much, guys. Right? Look at this. But look, okay, then then I say bring it on. I want to beat the exponential decay. So maybe I will go pull, let's go degree five, right? Obviously, at first, it was moving very fast, but no problem. Who's going to win it? Exponential decay is going to win it. However, if you think about that maximum point, is it changing? All right, please tell me. Is it changing towers to the left or towers to the right? Maybe I will, I will show you the, you know, another one, exponential TK. Is it moving towers to the left or towers to the right? So at this was the uh, with the quadratic, you see? This one was with the quadratic. But now if you look at degree five, did it change to the left or right? It changed to the actually right. It's moving towers to the right. Oh, wow. That's interesting. So at first, it was positively skewed. If it's a stretch to the right. Oh, hold on a sec. Do you guys remember when we actually discussed something about skewness? You know, the negatively skewed, positively skewed. Do you guys have an idea where we might have seen that before? In what topic? We know we got topic one, two, three, four, five. One algebra, two function, three geometry, two geometry, four statistic probability, five calculus. When was our first time to talk about this skewness? Very good, guys. Thank you very much. And my data here was up, you know, to the positive skew because it was, you know, stretched to the right. But as the degree is getting bigger and bigger, Let's make it maybe 15. Why not? I know eventually who's going to win, guys. The exponential is going to win. But let's have a look at the skewness of this graph and discuss what the behavior is going to be like. Oh, hold on a sec. It actually became 
more more symmetric right as x gets larger and larger guys so remember this graph gets more symmetric oh, hold on a sec hold on a sec hold on a sec guys hold on a second as is get as is gets gets more symmetric as n gets larger what important concept in statistic can i refer to if you answer this one you studied very well for topic four what is the first and the last time we saw something symmetric about it in statistic i'll be very happy Moji, moji. Yes, give a thought. It is the essential that you know this important for one and one and only one and only thing about the topic four. You you technically you're only learning this. It starts with N, guys. I'll be very happy. It describes the life. Sure, no problem. No problem. It this describes the life. It's called the normal distribution. So normal distribution is the distribution that we use it for describing the randomness behavior on the continuous situation, such as when you measure the height, average height or average weight, etc. We use it with the normal distribution. And as you can see, this, you know, you, you, you know, in this paper, you know, in this question, they don't talk about gamma function. Okay. It does not talk about normal distribution. But obviously, you know, that that the function is came from there. So whenever you see hard question in, in, in the exam, it's often to regard with the you know very advanced topics like this, you know, the normal distribution or gamma function. But obviously, if you manage to catch that and extending it to those topics. You are already guaranteeing at least 15 because you are doing a favor for IB. You know, they gave this question for a reason because it's very important later on in college. So if you can extend that, I think every paper three questions can be write, written, can be written as IA or E. I kid you not, right? And I'm doing that. And it's great. So explore more with very, very beautiful questions like this. Uh, you know, I was gonna talk about the another May 2023 question with the combinatorial proof okay but i will do that later okay because we are running out of time but yeah you know uh so you know two things i want you to remember two things i want you to remember from today's lesson okay two things i want you to remember the first yes you are not taking a test you're writing a paper you're, you're doing a research so everything you write you must justify we cannot take things for granted and number two where do I find the questions? Yes, IB books are already good enough. Enough. It is enough. However, when you found interesting question, when you found a hard question, it's not about whether you can solve it. How do you, would you justify why they gave that question? How can I justify on my logistic growth, growth, for example, how can I multiply one minus square root of T? That discussion is what you need to give on your IA. Why in other uh, they said it's a lump part equation. Why do they give exponential decay to the power of negative t? In Oxford book, they said it's a gum part equation. Why does it have logarithmic function in the differential equation? Is the things that you need to discuss. And that, that's the just the, within the differential equation. There are many topics other than differential equation that has a lot of different examples you can also find. But yes, IA doesn't necessarily have to be a real life example. Yes, sometimes some schools possessed with the application of real life it doesn't have to it's not a physics paper it's ia anything aesthetically beautiful in terms of deduction or uh, abstract of mathematics is good enough and that's usually shown in a very exam uh, the challenging exam questions right and if you you know what if you found some exam questions that you found it oh my god this the way they solve it is beautiful it's probably probably because it's got a very beautiful applications in harder topics you know for this complex number application is it's actually something with gauss you know it's it's how he used it he used this very method to prove the the constructability of polygons he said oh if you give me ruler and then compass i can construct polygons even even vertices i can polygon all of i can construct all of them but for the odd number of polygons there are certain number of polygons i can construct and and 
and and he used this technique to prove it. But obviously, he thought he, this question does not talk about it, right? Because it's very it's beyond the scope of understanding for high school. But you can extend it for the IA, and if you do that, it's just guaranteed that you're gonna get like full marks on the IA. Okay. All right, that's pretty much I wanted to talk about for the first lesson of IA, okay? So that you can also initiate writing. And, you know, if you start writing about and then give, you know, made a, some paragraph on your IA and show me, oh, is this the right way of writing? I'll be very happy to glance through and give you feedback, okay? But, but during the lesson so that, you know, everyone can share their opinion and see, oh, yeah, this is what they have done well and this is what they have, what they didn't do, what they could have improved. Things like that. I wanted to have, I want to have a, a discussion environment. If for if you are writing on an IA during the summer, okay, sounds good, guys. Please type so that I know. Yes. So should you have any question, leave a message on the group chat. I'll be very happy to you know answer. On cacao. Okay. Okay. Good. That's pretty much it for me today. Should you have any question, please ask me. Have a great weekend. Thank you.